All right, so this is the expansions box. <laughs> um, it's just a box with the expansions, which are the, the five decks. We got Great Cthulhu, we have Care, uh, I think it's Karen the Ferryman to the Underworld. <laughs> now I'm really confused. I got this other game and it's Karan for a different character. So now I'm, who knows? Um, Rick Fury, who's like Rick Sanchez and the 80s uh, Dungeon Master, which we just called the Game Master, modernized. Um, and not to mention the Instigator deck, like the first like supplement supplement, right? So um, it's got that in all of our Kickstarter extra reward cards. So it's already open. I got this earlier um, than the, uh, the base game boxes that I, you're gonna see in the other video. So this has already been investigated, but it's pretty cool to look at. I'm gonna just tilt it. Everything's in like that shrink wrap stuff, so you're probably gonna have a lot of glare, but it's kind of neat to see just a whole case of like these, uh, you know, the decks and the individual cards. Sue, can you, they see that at all? Or? Mm, a little bit. <laughs> you can see like that all the heads are the same on the all side right, of that. Yeah, which is, cool. I love that. I love that, the, the, the line of the stack of them. Okay. So I'm just gonna slide this over. Um, I do have some of these that are already open. You're gonna see me tuck on this shirt, it's brand new, so just like, it needs it's collars tight. All right, um, so the individual cards, uh, I thought it was really kind of cool. They just, they put them in these little sleeves for me, just, just for the heck of it, I guess. Um, so I'm just gonna pull those out. Uh, they look great. Got Ego, the uh, apart, <laughs> apart Menthian, apart Menthian. Uh, you can totally see the Ghostbusters reference there, but that was one of our um, big backers. You've got to make like your own, uh, we call them frenemies, we call them fiend friends, we're going, going back and forth, but you know, that pain in the butt roommate uh, that has some kind of unique pad and each of them have a unique starter card, like a unique adventure basically with three parts of how to escalate it for the game master, just like cues and stuff. Um, so these are really, really cool. Barb Kellner, another <laughs> one of ours, and you'll see that the art matches what we put on the uh, uh, the Instigator deck. Um, clearly, so that we could use it for more than one opportunity. These originally weren't supposed to have art, but it just seemed like we could totally do both with one. Like one commission, I bet you I could make for the instigator. I could use these to inspire it, and you know the three or four characters could have a picture just to make them cooler. So, um, you know the Kickstarter exclusive cards. Uh, I'm not going to show you every one of them just because you know I, I'm sure it'd be painstaking for you. But and I got to pull on my sleeves. But like they have a little line that says Kickstarter exclusive, just to let you know that you have this special card. And if somebody's playing with you and sees these cards, they're like, "Where did you get that?" Oh, it's a Kickstarter exclusive. Um, <laughs> actually, she said that out loud. Now it's like a wah wah um, moment. But hey, look, it's the evil me, Petrus. Thanks, Sal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, these are the um, we. You're only gonna be able to see one, but we had small animal taxidermy and bug collecting were a couple of the cards we unlocked in the campaign, part of social goals and stuff, so that's cool. Everybody's getting these. All right. The decks, the decks, the decks. So I had already opened some, so you won't see the shrink wrap, but you know, you can kinda, you can basically tell. It's got the little pull tab thing to open it up. And this is the Great Cthulhu. And it's funny because the border, they all have the same border on the sides of them. But uh, I shouldn't say the same. They got that teethy border that you'll see like on the box and the manual. But like the Cthulhu picture is so dark that it looks like it doesn't have one at all. Where most of the other ones you can see more of like the roughness because it, like they each have a color pattern that kind of sticks with them. Um, when we were talking about like how to best handle um, cards and like identifying cards that are part of a, a expansion deck because you're gonna take like if you're gonna play Great Cthulhu you're gonna take these cards and you're gonna roll them into your your base deck and you're just gonna pull up like the death card and the depth pad um, but otherwise the whole core game just gets 
a supplement added. And if you wanted to, you can mash even more in, but you'd have to pick who the one roommate is or who the two roommates are, which I feel like I should have thought of that before <laughs> now, but that'd be really crazy. It'd definitely take more than an hour for that. Um, but yeah, yeah, so the, uh, the, like, you can see the green is kind of the color pattern for Great Cthulhu. So the cards that are for Great Cthulhu have a color that identify them. They have different icons that identify each of them. Uh, and that's because, you know, if you're colorblind, uh, then we give you different icons. So there's multiple ways. Um, thanks to my friend John, who was like, you know, hey, that's important because you don't know who's going to play your game. And whether it's a visual impairment or if it's a color blindness, you're making it easier for those people. So you make games for people to play them. Now, the one thing I wish I would have done which I was just worried it was gonna slow down production, so I didn't, which is kind of a joke now, but um, th these decks are great, okay? Um, but the best kind of deck boxes have a little tab here, like you might be used to with a poker deck, and it just helps you use your thumb to open it up. These boxes are, a lot of the newer boxes have these little, kind of like these tab things that kind of, I don't know if it's for security purposes or theft, but they kind of make it so it's hard to open the tops without ripping them. Um, so I always take something like a flat edge and I just slide it under here and I wedge these out. You can manage, if you have nails that work to you, I don't usually have the nails, but just out of an abundance of caution and a lot of time working with retail products like this, I just always have some kind of a flat edge to wedge them out so there's no risk of tearing my box. Now you know. So it's fun that when you lift the tab out, you actually see the character. Again, abundance of caution. See the character on the tab? They're all over the place on this box. Like it's on the edge, it's on the top, it's on the side. So in a lot of ways that you might stack them or see them, it's fun just because all the character heads are stacking. Each one of them has a slightly custom way back, as you would imagine, uh, but for the most part, it's the same. Elder God seeks roommate. Cheap rent, must be open to sharing everything. Killer personality, a must. 666-555-5309. And you could live with that guy. Actually, I think, I think Cthulhu, yeah, I think we, we decided Cthulhu's pronouns were he, him. Uh, the, the, the writer that we had for it um, felt that it was important for great Cthulhu, but you'll, you'll notice that the pronouns change depending on which character it is. We try to have a nice variety um, cover bases. One of the downsides is we had a couple of female characters that just, we didn't hit those stretch goals. So I really look forward to having more female representation for the, uh, the frenemies. Um, as you can imagine, that's good and bad, right? You, you're not representing them in the best light. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, I still thought we'd have a woman. Okay, so uh, you can see we got credits. It flips, gives you the instructions for what's different in this case, uh, like how do I use the expansion. And then we go right into kind of like the core deck. Hey, look, it's Great Cthulhu. Great Cthulhu is at the Sunken Kingdom. Uh, the X card always flips to be a starter. So as you play, you start uh, by using this as the transition from making characters to actually playing the game. And then you place the X card in the middle so that we have that. This is a game that is definitely uh, full of immaturity for mature people, right? So, um, what was it? What did we say? Immature themes for mature players or something along that lines? Um, so clearly an X card's very important, especially because it's a pick up and play game. You, you probably, you might play with strangers or play with people who don't play role playing games. So I'm clearly people are gonna push buttons. <laughs> it's part of the game. So, um, a lot of the cards are very similar in pattern. You know, they're covering the dead end job, the odd hobby, the deadly object all the things that you, you have before. But the best thing about these is that each one of them has 13 new scenarios that are based around the unique character, like a great Cthulhu in this case. Um, and with that in mind, all of the jobs, the hobbies, uh, the objects, the pipe dreams, um, the pet peeves, all of these cards, um, take into consideration the character. Um, we, we liked, the thought process with these was, you're rooming with C Great Cthulhu. Uh, it, it's not like 
he's rooming with you. He probably looked at your roommate uh, application and chose you for some reason. So by adding this deck to the core deck, we're adding things that we like to think are a part of this great Cthulhu's interest, our slacker deadbeat version, right? So hopefully as you see cards in here, it's laughable, but these are the things that attracted great Cthulhu to your application and to you ultimately. So that's kind of the, the running theme of what happened with these. And uh, that's about it for that. Let me just see if there's, I guess I should give you a quick look at each of the other ones. So you got, we saw Great Cthulhu. We got Rick Fury. Rick Sanchez meets Samuel L. Jackson. Mad scientist seeks roommate. As you can imagine, we got portal jumping and futuristic cybernetic arms and all kinds of crazy stuff. We got the 80s game master, or the 80s dungeon master that we call the game master. Aging RPG icon seeks roommate. Uh, Mike Brodar did the, uh, the expansion, wrote the expansion for this. So it's funny because it's like an amalgamation of like pro wrestling uh, as, a, as a, like a love of the, the 80s Dungeon Master. So um, the, 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 the pad is like a, you know, crappy gym in like uh, a third world country <laughs> where yeah, obviously the Game Master has like goblins and other monster hordes that kind of run the, the facilities. And uh, we have Karen, the ferryman gives you a little more of a rural experience. We like to think uh, that Karen has the boathouse on the River Styx. The River Styx is really a lot a, a lot of fun because, you know, outside there's the the sea of dead bodies and dead people that you just happen to live on. And we kind of gave the the home is uh it's got that feel of like I don't know, kind of like a rundown uh boathouse. So rocking chair outside oh and there, there is some fun things you might see the easter egg is that the house actually has the band sticks guitar <laughs> it says sticks like like the band would have it and last but not least uh the instigator deck so the instigator deck is our first expansion uh it just kind of like a gm deck um the play, the gm has this at their side if they ever have those moments, you know, the game has a lot of improv, right? Uh, or um, sort of like, here's the situation, go. And if your players aren't used to that, there can be these moments where you have those pauses where you're like, uh, should I do something? And to try to make a game master feel more comfortable in those moments is kind of like a little deck of random things you could throw in just to spice things up. Maybe you need a little inspiration Maybe the, uh, the problem, uh, well, maybe the problem is that you have deadbeat roommates who are slackers and don't really want to solve any problems, <laughs> just want to sit on the couch. So uh, this gives you more random things to throw at them uh, or to spice up a situation or to add an additional scene. Like maybe there is a, a possessed trike. Trikey showed up outside the apartment one day. I ignored it at first, but couldn't help feeling like a helpless child was staring at me. It follows me now and attacks those who ridicule it. Let's see. Protesters. They really hate your guts, don't they? I should have known being one of your roommates was going to attract some unwanted attention. And they go on. There's there's like, as you can see, maybe too far. But I think there's like 50 of these. <laughs> Speaking of wrestling, the 24-7 belt. You and your deadbeat roommates can be fighting over who is the world champion of the 24-7 belt. They can be um, won at a pitfall at any time. You just need a ref. But conveniently, usually there's a ref that's running around. Um, and last but not least, this, this deck also gives you, um, we, we didn't want to overwhelm the core deck with deadbeat names and the, the deadbeat places because there's so many good ones. So uh, half of them ended up here. So even more names and even more places for you to work. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I didn't think it would take as long. I'm, I made a mess, but it's a good mess. <laughs> and uh, hopefully this will be coming to you soon. So I'm real excited. It's all ready to go. We're just waiting for it to get on the boat. So. Thank you.